Welcome back to another video. I want to address the following comment. So for the Makita 3D scan case, we have this comment. So uh, when you upload the next video for how uh, to model the surface of this cloud point, and let's take a look. So these are complicated cloud points for reverse engineering. So um, he needs a hint. Now, regarding this video, Let me jump over here within the video. Welcome back to So this is a 3D scan available from uh, Artec website. I also have it open over here. And if you take a look, the file is available in OBJ, Ply, WRL and Blender format. So the one that I imported within Katia V5 was actually converted from uh, from the blender file and uh, i have this converted into an stl that katia v5 can uh, read we can also go with a different workflow so we can also start with a wrl and again have that converted to um, an stl now there are some differences between um, a mesh so this is currently a mesh because we have the vertices but we also have the surfaces that um, that are defined in this case by triangles but for other models we can also have polygons katia will work with triangles so it will import stl um, as so but the main difference is that this is an stl so we see the mesh but we also have the possibility to use point clouds so this is actually the same point cloud starting with that stl so in order to obtain a point cloud let me just delete that and um, i have the stl over here importing katia now in order to have it this converted to a point cloud we can make use of the export tool this is available within digital shape 8 or shape sculptor as well so we can go over here on export we need to select the element in this case i know that the stl that i already have over here i will go for grouped and we're gonna see over here for the file name that we can choose um, ASCII free so i will go for this one and uh, let me call this um, makita from katia and i will have that saved i will click ok and now Katia has processed that. And if I will go to import, I will leave the scale factor to one. The file format will be ASCII free in this case. And this will be the following file. If I'm gonna check the properties, we're gonna see that this file will have 45 uh, megabytes. So I can have that open and I can cl click apply. And now Katia will load this as a point cloud. By default, the color of the point cloud will be green. And if I will zoom in, we're going to see that point cloud. If I will hide the initial mesh, so that STL, now we're going to have this point cloud. In order to start to work with this, we need to have this defined as a surface. So this is why most modern 3D scanning equipments directly offer the possibility to obtain uh, the STL, the OBJ, the WRL, which are all meshes. In comparison, the point cloud will only be so just a, just a point cloud, wide variety of points. Each of those will have the coordinates for the X, Y and Z. So this is, let's say, the definition of a point cloud of a standard one that doesn't have a RGB color. In order to define a mesh, we have the possibility to use the mesh creation tool within Digital Shape Editor. We can select the mesh and over here we can uh, also define the neighborhood size. So in this case, as we can see, this will go all the way to two meters. So that means that um, the model has not been scaled at a proper uh, size. 
So if I will go and check, for example, the um, information, and let me check the STL, which is this one, we see that the dimensions um, are quite large. So the model has been scaled 1000 times. This is because I initially loaded other models and Katia will always keep the last, uh, last settings. So let's just rescale those. I will put the compass back. I will go to insert and uh, afterwards for the transformation I will go for um, scaling. I will choose the initial Makita and I will scale this down with the following ratio according to a point which will be the reference point. So afterwards hit preview. I'm going to click OK. Hide the initial mesh. I will do the same for the point cloud. Usually it would be good to have that scaling re-exported, but for this case study I will follow this approach. So go to transformation, scaling, and the same scaling factor around the origin. Now if I will hide that as well, and now if I will zoom in over here on those scaling, let's just zoom in and see exactly how large this Makita should have been. So we have the following scaling. If I'm going to hide the first one, we are just going to be left with the point cloud. I will choose to fit all in so that uh, now I can um, easily rotate around this. And let me just check the, the size of this model, analysis, information, and we see that currently we are um, properly scaled. So we see that this will be 211 um, millimeters on the height since this is the largest um, out of those three. We are working with 3D scans, for example, as the one uh, available on Artec. It is important to check the, the scale because usually when we open stuff in Blender, by default Blender is set to meters and afterwards when you're going to have it imported in Katia, which is by default millimeters, we're going to have that 1000 uh, scale that we need to address. So that's why we rescaled it using 0.001. Now, in order to define um, the mesh, again, we have this mesh creation. I will click on the mesh over here and uh, we're going to see over here the neighborhood value. So it's currently set to two millimeters. I can have this increase to something uh, much more because there are some areas over here where maybe we don't have two millimeters between two of those adjacent points. Therefore, the final mesh will not be linked because, for example, this point maybe has that one, that one adjacent, and uh, they are quite far away. So if you have more than two millimeters between those, the mesh will not be generated over there, only for other smaller triangles over here. So I will add this to five. We can also see a preview of that. Currently, even two will be more than the resolution of the scan. So keep that in mind that you can check with, uh, with that. It is a little bit harder to spot if you are far away zoom from the model as the whole point cloud will be visible. But afterwards, if you're going to zoom in, you're going to find that, um, that size. So I will choose this to be smooth and I will click apply. And now, depending on the specification of your computer, this may take um, a while. This also based on the, the complexity of the model. In this case, the Makita case is quite a uh, fine detail, so this will maybe take a while. Maybe I'm going to stop the microphone over here and uh, in post-production, I will speed up this section. So. Let's see. Okay, so it actually processed quite faster than expected. If I will click OK, we should have that mesh appearing within the product tree, which is this one. And we see the mesh generated. 
we can also do a deviation analysis with for example the one generated by the scanner but again we should have that uh, the one scaled which is this one scaling but um, that will be for a, for a different video i also have some of those if you are interested in deviation analysis you can check my channel now to continue with that comment so since this is quite a complex part for reverse engineering in my opinion the best idea would be to follow that um, workflow presented within the video that received the comment and uh, you should just start to define various planes for example over here afterwards over here for the following section and try to manually trace those with uh, some sketches in order to define a good parametric model there is also the possibility to use quick surface reconstruction, but as this model has a lot of intricate elements on the, um, on the interior, for example, these um, positioning pins are not that well defined, so in reality it would be better to have them uh, modeled. Because if you're going to go, for example, with an approach like quick surface reconstruction, and uh, we can use automatic surface, for this model, most likely it will not be very precise, but if you want just a quick surface to start, you can try this approach. We see that uh, <clears throat> the mesh also contains non-manifold vertices, so the one created over here. To address those problems, before you can use the automatic surface, you will need to go with Mesh Doctor, within Digital Shapeator, and address all those um, problems. So. Let's take a look at that. Digital Shape Editor, we're going to have the Mesh Cleaner over here. Select the Mesh, hit Analyze, and we're going to see that uh, we only have one non-manifold vertices. If you're going to check the model, you're going to see some white points. So over here, we just have one vertex that um, is problematic. We can, kick up, we can click Apply. We see that Mesh Cleaner managed to fix that. Afterwards, you can click OK. And now this mesh will be ready for um, automatic surface, even though this isn't the best approach. But if you just want to have this as an editable um, surface in CATIA, you can try this approach. So select the mesh. I will go with the defaults. So mean deviation 0 0.1, surface detail 5000. You can also check full internal tangency, but that will process uh, even longer. So in this case, I will not have that checked. And I will click OK and let's see if um, automatic surface will be able to define this as a surface, because afterwards we can take that further within generative shape design and um, have it a closed body and uh, make it even compatible with part design. So this will maybe process um, in several minutes therefore again i will stop the microphone and within post editing i will speed up this section okay and we have the mesh done over here oh. i will leave also the time uh, at the bottom within this video to see how long this took to process and as you can see, this is the result. So just like I said before, the mesh won't be great with the details. We see a lot of intricate details over here that have just been merged together over here as well. So the mesh looked like this. And then we have the automatic surface, which has this surface over here which is clearly off so the best solution is just to go manually define a lot of planes a lot of extrude up to next and slowly generate this but if you just want something uh, done quick like this you can try automatic surface okay so i hope that you find this video useful i will position a similar video to the left i will add this to the katia v5 tips and tricks 
and I will also add the subscribe button. So that's it. Thanks for watching.